Welcome, dear friends, to our Trinity Sunday podcast. Trinity Sunday is the Sunday after Pentecost, and it is a Sunday where we try and grapple with the very nature of God, which is often very difficult. Let's open in prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we greet you. Lord, we thank you for your loving mercies, which flow out to us day by day. We thank you that in recent days we've been able to see, even still separated a bit, some of the people who we love most. But Father, we're also concerned about the depressing number of people who are still passing away with this virus. Lord, it's a personal tragedy for hundreds of people a week. Lord, a tragedy for their families. And Father, as we think about you today, we know that all things are ultimately in your hands. That you, God, are sovereign and that you rule over everything. And Lord, it is in your goodness we trust today. And Lord, as our Father, we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Let's say it together, shall we? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The scripture reading we're going to look at today, which Mike's going to read for us in a moment, is an account of the risen Jesus meeting with his disciples on the mountain in Galilee. And there he gives them what is known as the Great Commission, to take the good news of forgiveness in Christ and the love of God flowing through the gospel out to the entire world. And as I was reading it, I was thinking about the distance between then and now and how the faith that was once preached to the apostles in first century Palestine, how it's actually arrived at my door. And in my mind's eye, I saw a, a chain of people going down through the years. And I thought of some of the people who had been most influential in bringing me to faith myself. And then I thought they, in their turn, at some point in their lives, had heard the good news that somebody had maybe read the scriptures to them or they'd been in a service where the gospel had been preached. They had come to faith. And following that pattern back through the 20th century, 19th, 18th, that chain is unbroken. And eventually that chain arrives at this spot, at this moment, on this mountain in Galilee, with Jesus commanding his disciples to pass what they had learned from him onto others. And in a sense, the gospel has been, well, almost like a good virus spreading throughout the whole world, but not bringing death, but bringing hope and joy and everlasting life. And I pray that you might, in your turn, be part of a chain which you pass on the baton 
of the gospel to somebody else, that they in their turn may do the same. So our reading is Matthew 28, verses 16 to 20, and Mike is going to read it for us now. Our reading comes from the Gospel of St Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. The Commissioning of the Disciples Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reading sees the disciples meeting with Jesus on the mountain in Galilee. And the first thing that the disciples do is that they worshipped him. And this is of great significance. You see, Jesus said to Satan, remember, at the um, time of the temptation, where Satan tries to tempt Jesus to worship him, Jesus reminds Satan from the book of Deuteronomy, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. So only God is to be worshipped. In the book of Revelation, we see the Apostle John seeking to worship the angel who has been telling him things and the angel says, no, no, you must not do this because obviously all worship must go to God. And on this Trinity Sunday, it reminds us that Jesus, as the Son of God, is God incarnate and that therefore worshipping Jesus is right and it's proper for us to do as well. That all three, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, are co-equal, co-eternal and deserving of our worship. Jesus then tells his disciples that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority. That's a mighty thing, isn't it? And it reminds us as well that if it's been given to Jesus, then it has to be given by someone. And of course, Jesus is saying that the Father has given him, the Son, all authority. And it reveals something about the nature of the relationship between God the Father and God the Son, in that God the Son is still subordinate to his Father. Right throughout his ministry, Jesus has told us that he's not saying his words or his teachings, but his Father's. He's not doing his works, but he's doing his Father's works. And so Jesus here in his Sonship has received all authority. And that, of course, is a profound thing. It's from this position of all authority that Jesus then commands his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. And one person can only command genuinely another person to do something if they have the authority to do it. And of course, Jesus has. He tells them to go and do three things. To make disciples, to baptise them, and to teach them to obey his teachings. When he, Jesus said, to baptise them, 
he says this, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the Trinity is bubbling up here as well because although God is three in persons, the word name here in the Greek is singular. So the three, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, in their persons are one in their essence, in their name. Again, where it says baptising them in the name, again, our translation at times doesn't quite do justice to what the Greek is saying. A more literal translation is baptising them into the name. Now that has a much more profound implication than just baptising them in the name. It implies that baptism symbolically unites us with the person whose name we're being baptised into. So baptism in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is not just a symbol that's being carried out under the authority of God, which it is. It is a process, a sacrament, by which we become united with that person whose name is being used. And this concept of this deep unity of being brought into Christ is one of the great themes of the New Testament. As well, disciples, of course, are <laughs> technically learners and uh, we are in our Christian life in a place where we have a lot to learn from God. But discipleship, of course, means that we recognise that Christ is our master. And a master has authority over his disciple. And that is what is being brought out here. So we make, make disciples, baptise them, this unifying sacrament into the very person of Christ, teaching them to obey. So the disciples, we're going to have to go and make more disciples to baptise them and then teach them. And the teaching has a purpose. It's not so that we just know the right things about God or that we know sound doctrine, but all those bits of divine information, that divine revelation which we need to have, have the purpose of us being then able to actually obey what God tells us to do. This idea of authority, a disciple recognise the authority of the master and therefore doing his or her master's bidding. And so the teaching process that many of us have within the Church of God is to open the minds of people to understand what God would have them do. And that, is, dearly beloved, is what God would have us to do as well. And so the disciples have been given the baton of the word of God, the gospel of God, and they have been given the command to go and pass it on. And we read, especially in the book of Acts, for example, how they took that good news of Jesus to all those in Jerusalem, Judea, and ultimately to the ends of the earth. And in that process of succession, that good news of forgiveness in Christ and eternal life in his name has come to us. 
It may be that you haven't grasped the baton yet. Well, I believe that God is reaching out through others and offering you today the baton of the good news. You may feel that you need forgiveness. And God offers you that. You may feel dead inside and need new life. And God offers you that in his son. You may be fearful of the future and God offers you peace knowing that you can trust him. You may be fearful of death but God offers you eternal life a strength that will take you through the gateway of death and bring you into his everlasting home into the place he has prepared for all those who would love him and trust him. Jesus ends with a promise. And he says to his disciples, And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. So throughout this time, until the Lord returns and establishes his kingdom, by his spirit, he promises to walk with you, to lead you, to guard you and guide you. And I pray that as we reach out to Father, Son and Holy Spirit this morning, that we might have that peace and blessed assurance that things are well with our souls. And now to our prayers of intercession, which Mike is going to lead us in today. Father, I'm sorry for the way in which our nation is behaving, grasping freedoms for individuals, going to beaches, climbing barriers, leaving a trail of litter and defecation, for the anger and frustration building as each sees to do as they see fit, to declare how others should go to work or it's right they should die from COVID, for the deception of having someone else to blame, for the falsehood that everything should be perfect at the cost of loving our neighbours. Father, forgive our nation and heal the divides. Father, I pray for all charities where so many volunteer, giving selflessly. For charities like MHA, where your work is done in such a widespread manner, with utmost dignity, diligence and love. Where day-to-day -day living is a real challenge. Protecting residents and staff is so important. Thank you for their witness of love. Help us to love our neighbours. Father, so many have died from COVID in this nation and our region is suffering greatly. The worries and pains as loved ones are taken to hospital. For those in hospital, not only suffering sickness or injury, but also frightened by the surreal experiences for those working in hospital, providing caring and healing, for those at home, fretting, unable to visit or gain accurate information. Father, we pray for your blessing and peace on all these people. Father, we pray for all the families where members have died, the lack of traditional periods of family mourning and grieving, Restricted funerals. What additional pain is felt by the inability to gather, to hug and to cry together. Hear our lament 
come to our aid and give us your peace. We pray for ourselves and our loved ones. We pray for the circumstances of our neighbourhood as businesses struggle to regain a daily routine. Pupils and teachers, offices, works and shops reopening. Coming out of isolation is not so easy. Guide each of us as we're able to be safe and secure in the time ahead. We praise you and thank you that you have promised to always be with us. Let us recall those we will be meeting in chapel and remember their fellowship, their love, their encouragement. Come Holy Spirit, minister to our bodies, minds and souls. Restore to us love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Let us know your abiding presence and peace. We ask in our Saviour Jesus' name, to your glory. Amen. And so to our closing prayers. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. When peace, like a river, attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, Thou hast taught me to say, It is well, it is well with my soul. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you like the morning dew, bringing refreshing life. May that blessing feed you and lift you up and open your eyes to see the glory of the coming King. Amen.